Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Kitsicast, the podcast that definitely needs a better and more recognizable name. In this podcast, I'm talking about my personal development journey, trying to make it in life, whatever that means. We're going to discuss habits, routines, Pomodoro's work, work-life balance, life hacks, being a dad, self-help books, running startups, creating apps, and a bunch of other things. If that's your cup of tea, walk with me. Don't forget to walk. A lot of you are walking during the podcast, so now's the time. Put on your shoes, grab the headphones, get outside and walk. Send me video or comment questions. I'm going to prioritize the video questions. But at this point, no one is asking questions. I'm going to prioritize anything. I'm going to start inventing questions. I'll be like, uh, this question is coming from user uh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, that's interesting. She's probably an indie hacker who's interested in creating startup. Ask me something. If I haven't answered anything, with, with the amount of rambling that I do, I get it. That At some point, I'll answer everything. And you're like, what is the point of asking him things? Uh, conferences I'm going to is... Congress next year. I'm leaving tomorrow. It's going to happen after tomorrow. And after that, until September, I have one more conference. I'm going to September. This is one of my favorite conferences. It's called InfoBip Shift. It's in Zadar in Croatia. And it's absolutely gorgeous, dude. It's one of my favorite places. It reminds me of White Lotus holidays. Honestly, if you've seen the show White Lotus on HBO, if you haven't seen White Lotus, it's freaking amazing. Give it a chance. Both the seasons are freaking amazing. If season one doesn't click for you, try season two. And maybe it's going to click for you. But it's an amazing show. And the vacation here at this uh, resort is called Falkensteiner. It's so freaking amazing. I can't wait for this conference. But I haven't scheduled anything in between. So it's weird. I'm going to a conference now and then in September. I need more conferences to fill out the entire year. So if you're a conference organizer, winky winky. You know what I'm saying? From September, I'm going to do a new talk. Because at InfoBib Shift, I have given a talk. Um, the GitHub stars won't pay your rent talk. And usually for them, I prepare a new talk because there's no, you know, point of giving the same talk again. But at all of the other conferences, if I haven't given my old talk, I'm usually giving my talks for at least a year of time and at least like 10, 15 conferences because there's no way that people would overlap. And even I've had cases where people overlap and they're like, um, hey, this is the fourth or third or fourth time I'm watching your talk, which, you know, tap myself on the back. I guess my talks are flippity awesome, right? But it's also like people for... I, I, I don't know, man. I, I I don't fucking know. People think that they have to create a new talk for every single conference that they go to, but that's absolutely not true because the more you get feedback on your talk, the more you improve it, you, you, like you see the reaction from the audience, like what click, what didn't click, which slides are unnecessary. So the 10th iteration of a conference talk is usually better than the first one. So people would do it, spend so much time, they'll give it once and then they'll never give it again, which is freaking silly. So anyway, let's do a quick Benji review of habits, nutrition, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to share my screen here for the people who are watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're watching on the podcast, leave a review, whatever you're listening to podcast at. And maybe watch the video version. I appreciate the people who go out of their way. They're listening to the podcast version, but they'll go on YouTube just to feed that algorithm with, with a comment. So we're, we're best friends, basically. Um, all right. Sleep time and sleep score. Or I keep telling me to take it easy. The aura ring is like... I slept seven hours and three minutes and it's still telling me to take it easy. My body just, like I, I get high scores in Aura only if I sleep above eight hours, but I started sleeping with an alarm and that's that's what you get. I, I think as a parent, I should be grateful that I'm getting seven hours of uninterrupted sleep and I should stop complaining about it. Hydration, as always, God bless this thing. Um, absolutely killing it with the hydration. I have this little widget here that honestly, I'm not using it enough because I was using a smart bottle um, until this point. And it was automatically measuring every time you took a sip. But I stopped using the smart water bottle because it didn't, it cannot hold this much water. Like this is 1.2 liters and that was like 600 milliliters. So you need to uh, refill it more. And also I'm a dumbass. And when I unboxed my smart water bottle, there was a straw like this. And I was like, huh, what, what is this needed for? And I literally threw it in the trash. So now for three years that I had it, four years that I have it, I'm sipping from a bottle that's meant to be used with a straw because I'm a fucking donut sometimes. So anyway, this thing helps. Um, Zico sent me an article that, no, a, a tweet that someone found lead in Stanley Cups. So if the original Stanley Cup has lead, this is something from Timu, your boy is going to be poisoned. So we're going to make it to like podcast, I don't know, 34. And that's it. Podcast 34 is going to be called Rest in Peace. I, I don't know, man. At the end of the day, I guess it's like you can drink from plastic water bottles. You cannot drink from this because it might have lead lead in it and you're left with just a glass of water. I, I don't even know. What, what do you think about this? Anyway, this widget is pretty cool. I want to eventually start shipping Benji NFC stickers. So you can basically 
add them to your water bottles and to your glass cups if you're drinking from a glass cup which holds literally 0.2 milliliters of water so you can put an nfc sticker just that's my idea to scan this with the phone when i refill it and the information automatically goes to benji instead of me manually logging uh the water you can also log in water coffee tea so coffee and tea are like i think they're counted like 90 percent towards the goal anyway hydration tracker uh fasting has always been going great if I start this low carb diet, which I'm still thinking about it, I'm not sure if I'm going to start a slow carb diet. I might stop with the fasting, but for now, my body is used to, you know, I stopped eating today, literally at 3.40 p.m. So from 3.40 p.m., I haven't had any food. So finish one fast, start another fast. Today's weight log has been the same. So not going down, not going up. At least it's not going up. So I'm not going to complain. Workout, kill the workout, skipped a couple of exercises because the trainer added hanging bar, leg raises, like hanging on a bar and then raising your legs, which is a pain in the ass. It's pain in the core. I don't want to do that. So instead of that, I did a little bit of disco workout and it just pumped my arms as one should, right? That's the only important. Like I see my back, you know, in the mirror, I'm like, huh, there's some muscles there. Who gives a shit? The only parts that matter is chest and arms. Forget about everything else. I told my trainer, eliminate leg exercises because who gives a shit? Somehow I have shaped muscles on my legs. I don't know whether it's from running or whatever. It's enough for me. Like, stop it right there. I don't need to be one of those bodybuilder guys, you know? So naturally, I didn't tell my trainer. I just marked everything as complete. But I, I did bicep exercises. Cheers to that. Um, walking, I, I finished 11,000 steps today. Meals, I was eating clean. Except, I don't know if this is clean or not. I'm not planning to remove this meal. Like, this is the best thing, the best invention. Whoever made it, I made this. I invented this. Oatmeal with oatmeal, cocoa powder, vanilla protein, banana, fresh ras raspberries. Today, even upped it a little bit because I was usually adding the protein powder last and it wasn't properly dissolving in the thing. But now what I did is I, I, is I took a shaker, uh, a protein shaker, like the, the bottle that you use to shake the protein in, and I put like 200 milligrams, milliliters, no, 250 milliliters of oat milk. And then I put the protein powder inside, I shaked it, and then I put it in the oatmeal and put it in the microwave for two minutes. Now, does the microwave destroy every fucking thing that a protein gives to your body? Absolutely, yes. Should you cook in the microwave? Absolutely not, unless it's spinach. Reference to the episode yesterday. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, and then on top of it, you chop a little bit of banana, you put fresh raspberries, and then you put a, a bunch of, um, what is it called? Cocoa powder um, and coconut flakes. Dude, it tastes like a dessert. It tastes so fucking good. Now, I already had eggs and other shit for breakfast, but after I finished this workout, which was at 1 p.m., definitely didn't work at anything today. As you can see, my Pomodoros are absolutely M. There's no even, yeah, no Pomodoros today, as it says here. But after I finished the workout and after I did the cold shower and all that suffering and breathing exercise and all this shit, I'm like, there's no way in hell. There's nothing that's going to convince me not to go and make that oatmeal right now. So it was like 1 something p.m. I felt hungry after the thing. And instead of drinking the protein shake, I just put a little bit of oatmeal. Sue me. Now. Did it go in the middle of that? The irony is I ate that at the gym, at the home gym. So I made this plate and my wife was watching something on the TV. She's watching the show Dark in a bright living room. <laughs> Absolutely killing me. I'm like, hey, is the show called Daylight or is it called Dark? Watch it at night when it's creepy with proper sound and everything. She doesn't give a shit. Like my wife doesn't have audio video preferences. She can literally watch on a fucking Tetris screen in black and white and w without sound in Japanese dubbing, and she wouldn't mind. Like, she, she can just watch anything at any time. I admire that. Because I'm the guy who's like, it has to be on a perfect screen, the perfect light conditions. There's a little bit of reflection. You know, I bitch too much. So, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, food. Yeah, so my wife was watching that, and I'm like, well, the only thing I can do is eat mindfully. Cute. Not gonna do that, right? <laughs> Made the oatmeal, went downstairs in the gym, pulled up a chair in the middle of the gym. You're surrounded by equipment. I'm eating this dessert-like food. I mean, there's no sugar in it, technically. There's no, you know, sue me, whatever. And I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Finally, the show started making me laugh. Like, I like a couple of the characters. It's like, they're really funny. And I'm really looking forward to this activity. I don't know how I'm going to kick off this habit because now in the middle of the day, I'm looking forward for this meal with a TV show. Kill me. This is supposed to be a podcast where I tell you about productivity and how to be better and yada yada. So I guess if you want to be better, watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine and eat oatmeal with cocoa powder and whatever. So Pomodoro's did absolutely nothing today because MJ was sick. And he was like, hey, um, I'm calling in sick today. I cannot work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, it's a free day for me, right? No one there to bug you. No one there to ask you, hey, have you done this? Have you done that? So I just, I I'll talk more about my day later. Let's just review the habits and let's start with the screen sharing. Now, you might be, ex ex uh, uh, you might be expecting a red screen. But today, is it the first time? I think it's, this, yeah, it's the first time that I got a golden morning routine. 
Finally, dude, it's golden. Look at it, beautiful. I did everything. I even pulled out the journal. Let me show you the journal. There it is for people who are watching on video. It's called Gratitude Journal. Few minutes a day to develop thankfulness, mindfulness, and positivity. Now, I added journaling functionality in Benji just so I can do that. So I have a little template for journaling, but it's not the same as writing uh, with a pen on paper. Now, this literally takes a couple of minutes and the questions that it asks me are, uh, today I am thankful for, and you need to write three things that you're thankful for. Usually I've been filling this journal like half of it is full. Like in 2023, I was writing in this a lot, but usually you go through the same couple of things. Like you're grateful for my baby, for my dog, for my wife, for my family, for my yada, yada, yada. But it's still important to keep writing this just to, you know, in moments when you're like stressed or anxious or whatever, you just remember, well, at least everyone is alive. I have everyone around me. This is hard, but I think there's something about writing it down all the time, you know, because it sounds silly. You might be like, oh, what if I write it every day? It's not like I'm going to remember it, but I think it kind of works. So I'm going against my, you know, doubt and I'm just, I'll try to reincorporate this again because last date here is 26th of May, 2023. So, you know, it's been almost a year since I've done this, but I did it. Golden section, motherfuckers. Where's your golden section? Next question, th three uh, lines of how will I make today awesome? I don't know how to answer that. You know, usually it's just a bunch of like whatever. And then positive affirmations. You say like... I'm like, you already talk, you're not talking the future. Like I'm going to be fit. You're saying I am fit. I am rich. I am whatever. So you're talking in the present um, tense. And then you get um, one quote that you read in the end. And I think there's, uh, yeah, I, you also need to fill this in the night, but I've never filled the night portion of it. The night portion says little things that made my day, learnings from today and goals slash plans for tomorrow. And how are you feeling? So I've never filled the night portion because I barely do the morning portion. And in the middle, you get a quote, like the quote for today is, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege is to be alive, to breathe, to think, and to enjoy, and to love. Marcus Aurelius. So, it, yeah, it is. And you can be like, oh, wow, it's so amazing that we're alive. And until until your Wi-Fi signal drops by one bar, then you're like, fuck Marcus Aurelius, fuck being alive, fuck the earth, the sun, the planets, the whatever, dude. My wi can, can the Wi-Fi be fixed, please? Like, it's so hard to keep yourself grounded and to keep yourself thinking like the Stoics and everything. But whatever. I did the journal. The habits are freaking golden. The night habits, I'll collapse them. Fuck it. We're not talking about them. Most of the other habits are good, uh, except no sauna and no reading. Uh, no, fucked up on the coffee today. I had coffee after a long time. Other than that, is it was a pretty good habits day. Let's move on. Because I need to pack. It's 9.39 and I haven't packed a single clothing item for my trip that's supposed, like we're supposed to leave at 8, 9 tomorrow in the morning. I haven't packed anything. So let's just get through to this podcast. It cannot be a fucking hour today. It gotta be 30 minutes and get the fuck out of here. Let's look at the goals. Getting to 85 kilos, gotta get there. Paying out this house, nothing done about it. Like with this work ethic, as you can see, I'm feeling guilty even recording this. Like telling you about productivity and shit. I haven't worked a single minute today, dude. So not gonna pay off this house. But at least I, I read four books per month. I listened to one more book from this, Brianna, whatever. We're gonna talk about books later. So definitely, technically I listened to them, but I, I finished four books this month. Yes, they were shorter than usual. Like the audiobooks were like five hours, five hours, four hours. And the last one was two and a half hours. And I, I listened to them at 2.2 speed. Two point, yeah, 2.2 speed. And technically I finished four books this month, but I started very late with the audiobooks. L literally all of these audiobooks, I completed them in four or five days. So next month, when I'm going to start listening every day, probably I'll have 10 books, hopefully. Like the thing is, after I finish a book, I'm struggling what to pick next. Like I'm just scrolling through Audible. And when I cannot find something, I'm like, oh, fuck it, let's listen to a podcast. So if I just get rid of that habit, I even made a Siri uh, shortcut. Sorry if I triggered your dumbass assist. And now she's going to be like, playing the weekend for, for no reason. Uh, but basically, I made a shortcut that anytime I open the podcast app, it just opens Audible. So I just kill this habit. And even when you swipe back to podcast, it just goes back to Audible. So hopefully, I'm going to get into the habit of listening to more audiobooks. Six back this summer. If I keep eating oatmeal, that goal is not going to happen. Fixing leg pain, waiting for MJ to... Contact Arthur. Now, let's get into the day. So first thing I see in the morning is MJ calling in sick. Internally, I'm like, oh, no, that's so sad. Externally, I go like, fuck yeah, no working today also for me. No, because today I was planning to pack and to do all these things throughout today, to do a bunch of chores and errands just to be ready for the trip. And none of that fucking happened. Why? Wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth. Now, you remember I was at the dentist two days ago. At this point, we have to have a Kitsa bingo, a Kitsa cast bingo. Like, which of these activities has Kitsa done in the day? Number one, dentist. Number two, the mall. And you're like, no fucking way. You did that on Monday. Did it today again. Because I was brushing the teeth and I was just rinsing with water. And before I spit, like I just see the fucking fake 
tooth that I'm so fucking sick of at this point, dude. I've been at the dentist four times in the last week. It's so annoying. Like, falling, and I'm not even mad. I just text the dentist, hey, at this point, this is funny, but do you have a slot for me today to fix this motherfucking thing? It's so annoying, dude. And, like, <laughs> I'll talk about entering the dentist later. But that basically happened in the morning. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's going to be one of those days. The podcast should have been called Something Always Happens. Now, you cannot tell me, oh, kids, you're not special. Like, everyone has a life and everyone has things. But you see that something always happens to me because I'm special. There's an interesting subreddit called I'm the main character or something like that. Where basically, you know, you're too self-centered. You're like, I'm the main character. Why does everything happen to me? I'm trying to take this experience, even though, you know, I'm joking about it and I'm complaining kind of about it. I'm trying to, like, as my daughter grew up, a lot of my days are going to look like this. And if I just take one event and then just bail on the rest of the day, I'm not going to finish any work. Like, I don't need, I either need to hire way too many people or nothing is going to happen. Because with kids, like, she might get sick, something, I might need to take her somewhere, whatever, whatever. Like, there'll be too many events and random events in the day and your boy's not used to them. Like when my tooth fell out, immediately what fell out is my calendar. Just went to my calendar. I went delete, 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 delete. Nothing happening today. So I, yeah, I did that. And um, what, what was I doing in the morning? I, I just worked out and I showered. And basically I have no idea where I lost the day. I was reading about the slow carb diet, whatever, until like I had so much time to go to a dentist and I was still late. And for the first time, the lady at the reception was actually laughing because I'm their new employee there. You know, they're like, welcome. Like today, they give me the scrubs, the everything, everything that you need. And she was like, it's your first day. You mentioned on a podcast yesterday because at, at the dentist office, they're playing my podcast on loudspeakers. Like you mentioned that you had a, one at a random job that's not in IT. So you're a dentist from today because you're here more than our fucking technician at this point. No, jokes aside, she was laughing. She saw me. We didn't even speak of everything. Like the other doctor, like the receptionist, she just started laughing. And the doctor was like, come here. And she explained like the reason why this falls so much and before it didn't fall so much because now we have a screw and we need to mount the fucking crown and the screw is like too low and then the tooth doesn't have any. And I'm like, lady, I don't give a fuck about the explanation. I have a conference talk in two days and like I, I won't be able to give my conference talk, you know, like I would. Dude, if I go to the dentist in war, so I'm going to start going to dental conferences soon. If something happens, and I have a feeling that it's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm speaking in the morning, opening the conference at 9 a.m. meeting, if it happens in the morning like it happened today, there won't be anyone to fucking fix it. So I'll either have to go on stage and be like, no guard, talk like Bane. You were just barely molded, but whatever Bane said, molded by the dark or whatever the fuck he said. Ah, uh, I'm just tired, dude. Hopefully I won't go to a dentist in Warsaw. I'll, I, I think if that happens, I'll just cancel my talk. I don't give a shit. I'll be like, well, it was a fun trip and brr, sorry. Call someone else. I think Zico has a talk. So Zico has seen my talk so many times that he can actually give my, my talk instead of me. So I think that's going to happen. So you might ask yourself, hmm, what happens after a dentist? But if you're listening to this, you already know. After the dentist, we go to the mall. Yeah, and what do we get in the mall? We get fucking bubble tea. Now, did they laugh at that place? No, because they're changing employees. But if it was the same person, they're like, oh, this person is getting bubble tea every fucking day while he has a podcast talking about healthy life. But Bubble tea, I still count it as, you know, it's not that bad. I don't get the milky edition. I get just the tea with strawberry and with just tapioca things. They're so, like, I don't even, let me just chat GPT. What is tapioca? Do you see how I use chat GPT as a verb instead of Googling? I use chat GPT way more than Google. Tapioca is a starch extracted from the roots of the cassava plant. The fuck is a cassava plant, dude? It's commonly used in cooking and baking and a thickening agent in putting soups and other dishes. Tapioca pearls, also known as boba. Dude, this is the educational podcast. I'm going to change the... I don't even know which category it's in, but we're going to change it to the most educating podcast ever. Educative. Are popular in bubble tea and other beverages. I didn't know that boba is actually tapioca pearls. What the fuck, dude? This is probably so healthy. How many grams of protein? And macros in tapioca. We got to learn, dude. We got to learn things here. So bear with me. Tapioca prime... Chat GPT made that sound, not me. Tapioca primarily consists of carbohydrates. The macros in tapioca can vary depending on the blah, 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 blah. Carbohydrates around 27 to 28 grams. Fat, negligible amount. See, they don't make you fat. Protein, neg negligible amount. And fiber, zero point. So it's mostly carbohydrate. How much sugar? Is it, It's like in the sugar, like in the... Mm, does not contain any additional sugar on their own. And I don't need to re read any further. So it's just a bunch of carbs. It's fine. There's no sugar. Fuck yeah, I wasn't cheating on my dad, dude. I love having bubble tea. I hate that appearing events like I'm three years old. I go to the dentist and I get bubble tea. Now, you might ask like, did you go home or did you walk in the mall like you're 95? I actually went home, but I went to the mall later and I walked like I'm 95. 
So I, I grabbed some takeout food and can we just talk about how overpriced takeout is, especially when you're eating healthy. Like when you grab Pizza Hut, when you grab something else, that actually like you cannot replicate it easily at home, even though my wizard of a wife once replicated Pizza Hut pizza to the point where we were watching TV. I'm not sure, I haven't mentioned this on a podcast. Like she made pizza one of her first times making it. But as I said, like our oven wasn't working. The numbers weren't proper. Somehow this woman figures out recipes. She wasn't following a recipe, copying YouTube, whatever. And we were in a habit of like eating uh, Pizza Hut almost every Friday. So I got so used to, you know, just getting takeout and pizza and watching a TV show that she serves the pizza, puts it on a plate, the same plate that we would get with takeout. And we start eating the show and I just feel like a piercing look to the left. You know, and I'm I, I'm about to grab one of my slides and, and I'm like, what? She's like, well, you didn't say anything about a pizza. My wife definitely doesn't talk like that, but I'm going to make her talk like that just to make it funnier. Okay. You didn't say anything about a pizza. And I'm like, oh, what do you? Oh, shit, you made this. Like, I swear to God, tap my myself and my wife on the back it tasted exactly like pizza hut so the point is but when you order it like there's something special about it when you order fucking like today we had salmon with steamed veggies and rice and i paid almost like 30 euros for that motherfucker and i'm like what the f it's i can't i need to get a rice cooker dude so bad i i, I was researching brands of rice cookers and like th there's this toshiba rice cooker that i heard on the team Ferris podcast that actually reduces the carbs within the rice like it sounds like bullshit but google toshiba rice cooker carbs and you're gonna find it of course it's only in the usa i couldn't find it but anytime i would pay for takeout because we don't have time or whatever i'm like oh if i only had a rice cooker put the thing steam a bunch of vegetables fry some salmon and there is like 30 fucking euros absolutely not worth it anyway took the takeout i was about to drop the car to the car wash i go to the car wash and they're like you have to come at 4 p.m so i drove home we had the food Kiss my daughter. She's like, I'm growing up without a dad. Today. I'm like, daddy has to go to the dentist and then the mall. And she's like, but then the mall again. And I'm like, yeah, daddy has to walk in the mall because he's 95, right? So I drive back to the fucking mall and the idiot that I am, my laptop is locked until 6 p.m. So basically I had this program, the cold turkey one that blocks my laptop and it's only allowed from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And the car wash was at 4 p.m. So I'm like, now this is going to take two hours. I have to be at the mall, this mall, that at this point, I should work at the reception. At this point, when people are like, oh, I'm sorry, where's H&M? And I'm like, that way. It's next to the fucking bank. Like, I know the entire layout at this point. So I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do at the mall again? So I, uh, so I took the Steam Deck. But I felt like there's so many things to do today. Haven't packed at all. Haven't done anything. Your boy is chilling at the mall. So I just took the fucking steam deck. I dropped the car at the car wash. Like the car wash is so tight and the guy's like, oh, you need to put a little bit more to the left. And I'm like, that's not my job. I have a bigger car wash, you donut. And uh, I took the steam deck. I grabbed some coffee. I wanted to order decaf, but I'm like, fuck it. I feel like I'm going to need energy today. Did it give me energy? Absolutely not. And I was listening, <laughs> dude, what is my life at this point? It's so nice I'm recording this at one day just to listen back to what the fuck was I doing in life. So I was sitting in the mall. They were washing the car for an hour and a half. And I was drinking cold americano with ice playing hades hades on steam deck and listening to the last two episodes of my own podcast <laughs> and i'm here talking about productivity dude like just this last sentence i i, I don't know what to tell you that's what i did i'm 100 honest with you i couldn't have my laptop with me i couldn't work there's nothing else to do in the fucking mall but it was kind of relaxing and chilling so now i figured out this hack like while I'm playing on the Steam Deck, because I've played this game so many times, I know all the levels, I can't, cannot beat the final boss, that I just uh, drop the volume to max to, to zero, and I just put in my AirPods, and while I'm gaming Hades, I'm also listening to an audiobook. That's how I went to so many audiobooks these days. Or I'm listening to a podcast. It feels like, like my brain is finding, like, how can we stack many activities one on top of the other? Being at the mall, having coffee, listening to a podcast, playing a game, washing the car, but I still feel inefficient. Like, I feel another fucking lost day. And... I definitely need to do transcript as an analysis of this to see like my actual productivity levels. I want to feed this chat, like feed this transcript from this entire podcast to chat GPT, but it's going to unplug itself. The poor thing It's going to be like, this guy is talking about productivity, unplugging myself. I, that's, that's how chat GPT talks. Anyway, anyway, da -da -dum, da -dum, what what did I want to say? Yeah, I at the mall, like, um, I got my day ruined, so I'm not going anymore. Because at the parking lot, I saw someone with not one Apple sticker. I mentioned how much I hate people who, you know, they unbox an Apple fucking package, like a MacBook or a phone or whatever, and they're like, oh, stickers, honey, be right back. I'm going to go put one on the car. What are you doing? For real, who thinks like that? But this guy, I don't, like, not one sticker, I swear to God. Not two stickers, 
You think I'm joking? Not three stickers. They had four Apple stickers. One, it, it's like displaying the battery bar of their car. You know, four out of five Apples charged. Like, but what? Maybe they heard the Apple a day moves the like. Apple a day moves the doctor away. Yeah, when you get an Apple a day, that all the doctors move to Florida. I'm tired. It's it's 10 p.m. It's been a long day. I need to pack. Kill me. So it's packing day. Let's talk about that. And this has happened on every single trip of my life. Like I've been to a billion places, traveled to so many conferences, and not once have I thought of doing things in advance. Like I can already pack most of my stuff two days in advance. But on the last day, at literally, this is like always happening. At 10 p.m., I start packing. I start panicking. I go through my list of shit that I need to pack, which I'm going to share a bunch of random items. I Like I'm a weird packer. I go through a super detailed list. And dude, if you think that you don't need fucking band-aids when you're packing for even what, for a most random trip. Yes, you do. So I'm going to tell you some of the most random items that I have like band-aids or some random shit that I put in my uh, backpack. So anyway, like I'm going to pack now and it's annoying that I always do it at 10 p.m. I usually end, oh, you think like, oh, well, it's going to be fast, right? It's a three-day trip. It's in Warsaw. Basically, you have the same supermarkets. You have all the things that you have here in this part of Poland. You have them in Warsaw, right? No, it's going to take three hours. It's going to be 1 a.m. I'm going to hate myself tomorrow. This is on every single trip. One day I'm going to succeed and I'm going to plan up front. The day is not that day. I watched the car like one on the actual day. I could have done it three days ago. And I have to go and place a sticker on my car like baby on, on board. That's going to be the only st That's the only sticker that you can actually put on a car, period. When people put a sticker like, I love golf. It's killing. No one gives a shit. It's a green light. Move on. Fuckers. So anyway, I've been thinking about selling the Model 3, honestly, getting a Model Y, because today we have to put in the stroller, I have to take out the wheels, I have to collapse the stroller, like there's no way to fit any luggage when you have the stroller in the back, like I'll have to use the front, the sub front, it's gonna be annoying, I'm thinking of getting at least a Model Y until one day I can afford a Model X, but it seems like changing a car while you haven't paid off your mortgage is a dumb idea, but I'll see, because this is gonna be impossible, but we're not going on that many trips, but on the other hand, I wanna start going on that many trips, so... With the kid, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. We'll see. You listen. I, I packed all the podcast equipment, microphone, camera, all sorts of shit. So tomorrow you're gonna listen to the podcast of how the day went and how the packing and everything went. It's gonna be interesting. Um yeah, the final thing, yeah, that I wanted to show you is the packing items. Now I have this as a Benji feature, but it's not completely polished, so I don't recommend you to use it yet because it's gonna frustrate you. Eventually I wanna polish this. Or it's gonna be in other languages too, not just in Polish. <laughs> very funny you donut so basically i have packing activities and with every activity i'm pairing a bunch of packing items so then when i add a trip i choose which activities am i going to do on this trip and then it compiles a packing list for me now eventually i also need to do a list of tasks for example um with the activity driving if i'm driving somewhere a task that i need to do beforehand is like wash the cars like two days before that and then charge the car one day before that. So I want this automatically to be added to my to-do list. As soon as the, the time comes for the trip, like all of these to-dos for a certain activity, they should automatically go to my to-do list. Also, another feature I'm planning to add is some of the items for the trip are expandable, like you might need wet wipes or whatever, and you might not have them to pack them. So for those items, I want them to be automatically added to your shopping list on Benji. So a couple of days before, like you can do your shopping and then you can do your uh, packing. And a uh, feature that I had in my Coda, but I don't have it in Benji yet, I think, is charging. So you mark which devices need charging and it makes a little nice, like in Coda, I have a nice charging board and I can drop them in a Kanban view. Like this one, I cannot pack it because it's currently charging. This one needs charging. This one is charged. And the final logic that I have is which items are for in the morning because I, I hate to see something in my packing list, we cannot, which I cannot pack right now. So I, I mark a bunch of things like I need to take them in the morning, like my phone and my AirPods and whatever, because they're usually charging overnight. And then in the morning, I open the packing list again and I go through the things that I need to do in the morning. And a final, final feature that I have, uh, and it's in Benji already, but it's not like you can check it, but you don't get UI for it. It's going to be soon. Is on, uh, You can mark an item as needs to be double checked, meaning your passport, money, whatever you need. Those items like in the morning. Even though you check them in the morning, they're going to be unchecked and you'll need to double check them, making sure not to forget anything. Why all the effort, Kitsa? Because once I went to Macedonia, not kidding, without a fucking passport. I don't know how I, like, I don't know how I got there, but I think I was missing my Macedonian passport. Like, I was missing missing one of my passports because I have a Polish one and Macedonian one. So my, my wife, who was in the Netherlands at the time, had to DHL it to me 
and we paid. I don't know how much we paid because I forgot my pass my passport. And from then on, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to use Lyft because I'm a donut. So random things that I have on my packing list. HDMI dongle one, HDMI dongle two. I take two HDMI dongles because I'm using the MacBook here, which doesn't have an HDMI port. And I'm no, I'm not going to buy a MacBook Pro because they're like bricks. So until Apple makes a proper laptop, like back in the day, they, they made these nice, thin, sleek, nice looking laptops. I'm not buying one of their brick ass thick laptops, no matter if they have an HDMI port or not. Then we have car navigation magnet, just in case I need to rent a car somewhere and they don't have a fucking navigation thing and I can mount my phone there. This is this scenario has never fucking happened. Then we have a bunch of vlogging things like GoPro and batteries and chargers and selfie sticks and SD card tray. I finally found a slim. You remember the SD card tray that I showed you yesterday, thick one? I finally found something slimmer. It's, it's, it's nice like you basically pin all the SD cards around it and it's thick as a credit card. So that takes less space. Uh, what else do we have? Stretching ball. I had this on a couple of trips. I don't even use a stretching ball at home, but I'd like to think that one day I'll be the person who takes a stretching ball and in the morning in fucking, I don't know, in Norway or somewhere is going to be like, oh, what a nice morning. Like, instead of going to the buffet and killing a breakfast for four people, right? Let's use the stretching ball. Never is going to happen. What else do we have? Resistant bands for working out. Not going to pack it this time because it's I have used the resistance bands in hotel rooms, but we're going for three days. We're going with a baby for the first time. You're not going to use resistance bands. Uh, you don't. Know. Then we have Oculus Quest. Yeah, I, ha I have traveled with an Oculus Quest in the past when I was too much into it. I remember with my mom, we were in Paris. And as soon as we arrived in Paris, like that was the first Oculus Quest that I had. And I wanted to show it to her. Like we arrived at Paris. She hasn't seen the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower or anything. This was a gift uh, this was a trip that I gifted to my mom and I vlogged it and I'm a donut. I never uploaded the vlog, but we had an amazing time. And uh, the first thing we did in Paris is she put on a VR headset and she played that demo app. And I was sitting like a more in a hotel room watching my mom explore the metaverse. She was like, oh, look at this animal. And I'm like, the Eiffel Tower is right this way, whatever. So uh, on the way back when I was, you know, I was supposed to go to a conference. We were going towards the airport. She was nudging me. We were sitting in, a, in the bus going towards the airport. I had my Oculus Quest watching a movie. She was nudging me. Look at the sunset. Look at this. Look at that. And probably she thought that I'm a weirdo. Because I am in a way, you know, like the only guy in the bus. Like back then, I think wearing your Oculus Quest in Apple Vision is going to become more normal. But I'm talking about 2018 or 19 at this point. There was zero people wearing an Oculus Quest. And I'm not packing that ever in my life, ever again, especially with a kid. I'll never need that. Then we have a bunch of tasks that I need to do when we're leaving the house, like turning off the water valves and closing all the windows and turning off the central heating. Like I have a detailed task of everything that needs to be done. Then a bunch of tasks if I, in case I take my dog. Then I'm going to take an external SSD just in case there's a lot of data, right? Just in case the weather is like raining data and I need to collect all of the data, I'm going to take uh, half a gig of SSD with me. Then we have a Chromecast. So I've been traveling with this, um, what is it called? The Google TV. Because it happened a couple of times in our lives that we were bored and we've explored everything or we were tired or whatever. And you go to the hotel and the fucking hotel interface is horrible. So the life hack is you have a Google TV stick or an Apple TV, which is a bit bulkier. I prefer I, I prefer Apple TV on every single of my TVs at home. There's an Apple TV because the TV interface sucks. But for traveling, like I prefer the Google TV because it's a stick. However, every time I use it and it lags because naturally it lags because it's Android, right? I'm like, thanks God I don't use this bullshit at home. But the nice thing is you have all of your streaming services loaded up. All of them are logged in. So you just put it in a hotel uh, TV and you can just, at night before you go to sleep, you can watch an episode of something. So it's nice. Not taking it this time. I think this habit is going to die because from now we're going to travel with the baby and she's not going to look at screens. So we're going to all be mindful and meditate like Buddhists and just, I don't know, have smell like sticks or like, what are those called? The, like I, I'm blanking out. It's like 10 p.m., whatever. Uh, we're going to be Zen people from now on. No screens. Now I have band-aids because you might cut off your finger. And you might be like, haha, silly kids are taking band-aids. But one day it's going to happen and you're not going to have band-aids and you're going to think of this goddamn podcast. Then I have bath sponge, which I'm not packing. But like, I want to have it one day. I have, I bought a couple of extra sponges that I keep. Like I have a travel box at home. It's like all of my travel gadgets and packing cubes and thingies. And I have a bunch of sponges. But anytime I'm trying to take, I'm like, oh, fuck it. You won't need it. Because I hate, like at home, I use a travel sponge. Like you put the, the shower gel on it. And then you apply it to your body because it's easier. And anytime I do it, I just consciously think, how do other people not use a sponge? Like you put a bunch of shower gel on your hand and it just disappears. You put it on one spot on your body and it's gone. Shower, like, 
write a comment if you're using a fucking bath sponge. I need to start traveling with a fucking bath sponge. Then we have a vitamin box, which I'm not going to take for three days. Like, I have one of those that has, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and you put, like, vitamin D or zinc or magnesium or whatever you have. At this time, I'm too lazy. Because previously, I was using it at home, and I would usually take the home version on the trip because it's locked and loaded for the upcoming days. But now I have to find it, and I need to pull the, put the pills. Fuck it, not doing that. Then we have a clothes roller. And then we have a socket splitter, whatever that thing is called, because it happened a billion times in a hotel room that um, I have way too many things to plug in and charge, but you have like only one or two sockets. So I have that thing, whatever it's called, that allows you to plug in multiple things into one socket, post it in once on Twitter. People are like, you're going to cause a fire. They didn't cause a fire. Shut up. Then you have pen. Naturally, you might someone want, might want your autograph, right? Or I don't know why I'm taking a, a, a pen for. I have no idea, but I want to have one. Then I have packing bags and laundry bags. So I, I pack all of my clothes. I still haven't packed. It's 10.02 p.m. But I'm going to pack in packing bags. I don't just put my clothes in a suitcase. Like I have all sizes of packing bags. I roll all of my underwear and socks and everything. It's like meticulously organized. But for the way back, you just cram everything in the suitcase. And I have laundry bags. Like there are two bags that you just put your dirty laundry in instead of just mixing it with your other clothes. I hope that this is the norm for traveling because if I think that you guys don't use any of these things, it makes me anxious, makes me nervous. You have dirty underwear. Where do you put it? Nylon bag? No, you need a bag that says laundry with a little airplane on it. Need to find those fuckers. Next, we have electric toothbrush. Yes, I have a separate electric toothbrush that's always charged and I take it on trips because I want in the morning not to forget my toothbrush. Whatever, dude. Or a ring. Uh, Kindle, never, never have taken a Kindle on a trip. Always I optimistically take two hard copy, like hardcover books on a trip and I read zero pages. So I'm not going to take a book anymore. Now I'm going to take a Kindle. Fuck it. Polaroid camera. I hate carrying that thing. Yes, it's fun because you're a hipster and you're like, oh my God, we had such an amazing time in Croatia. Look at this half blurry Polaroid that I thought it's, it's going to take a picture like an iPhone, but the picture is now completely black because it doesn't have HDR and processing and all sorts of shit. So we have like from from Spain, I have a couple of pictures. There's literally just like white dot on a black picture. But the memory is right. Kill me. Never taking the Polaroid is too bulky. AirPods Max are the worst Apple gadget ever. I want to say that because I gave them to my dad for cleaning. He disassembled them and he figured out a YouTube tutorial for cleaning them. He brought them back, but he didn't have time to assemble them. And this has been four months ago. I still haven't assembled them because fuck them. Like they don't have an on and off button. They drive me crazy that you cannot turn them off. Anytime I charge them, like I forget about them. And then I try them one more time and they're just, the battery is dead. So fuck it. I'll use them for traveling on airplanes and whatever. Oh, I forgot about the biggest topic today. God fucking damn it. It's 37 minutes in. We're going with a car. And I need to mention that I absolutely hate driving. And people who prefer to drive somewhere are out of their flipping minds. Dude, give me a train or a plane any day, especially a train. I love trains because you just, oh, I walk in two minutes. I walk in 10 seconds. Like that conductor guy is like waving. He's like, come on, come on, enter. And I walk in. Oh, how many bags? <laughs> What's the bag limit? 37 if you want to, right? They're not like Wizard and Ryan because they're like, uh, sir, this is like 10 grams more than the allowed limit. So I'm going to ask you to very awkwardly sit in the middle of all of these people watching you and go through your underwear until you lose 10 grams. So I naturally, I just take my cocaine and just throw it away. I'm like, fine, you know, I'm going to throw that away just to, to, to meet with the airline criteria. So I'm joking. I'm joking. Relax before you fucking flag the podcast or something. I hate people who podcast and they're like, we cannot say the F word. Oh, are we allowed to say that? Yeah, you're allowed to say anything. Like, grow up. Don't fucking bow to the algorithm. Donuts. So what was I saying? Uh, on a train, you can hop in one minute. There's no check-in. There's no fucking TSA scan. There's no all of this bullshit. You go at any time. Take as much luggage as you want. Is there Wi-Fi? Yes. It's for free. They have a restaurant. Usually when we travel in Poland with a train, we just, we don't go to our seats. Like, we would buy uh, tickets for where, whatever and then we just sit at the restaurant. And if it's like a four-hour trip, like first we'll have coffee or a drink, then we'll have some peanuts, then we have some breakfast, then after a while we might have dessert, then after that we have lunch, then we have another dessert. Like, and ironically, the, tr the train service, like the restaurant in the trains in Poland, is better than some actual restaurants in Poland, which blows my mind. It's so freaking good. And anytime, like, 
you see outside and it's beautiful. You're not in these like fucking gray clouds and there's someone sitting on the window seat and they pull the thingy down and they're like snoring there. Fuck airplanes all I'm seeing and fuck driving. Like, yes, I'm going to use autopilot tomorrow for most of my drive, but I have to go to another city to charge the car. And even if it wasn't electric, dude, I cannot do any of my activities on an airplane. I would game. On a train, I would work. I can read a book. I can do whatever. Now I have to be the highway, be like, oh, fuck this truck. Oh, fuck this guy. Oh, did you see, honey, honey, did you see how it cut me off? You know, the classic marriage conversation in the car. Kill me, dude. Kill me. Four hours. And with the baby, it's probably going to be five, five and a half. My wife needs to breastfeed her. All of these things are going to happen. Oh, I miss traveling with trains. So I guess when the kid grows up eventually, she'll be like, daddy, why are we not using the car? Because trains rock. Moving on to the packing list. Um, Max save charger. Steam Deck, my favorite thing, is definitely coming with me, even though probably I won't have time to game, but you, you, you never know. I'm going to take it. I have shavers. <laughs> I should shave tomorrow morning, but I'm not going to pack my fucking shavers. Uh, what else? Charging brick baseball hat, because God forbid we don't have that protein powder and protein shaker. Once I went on a trip and I had, <laughs> I took vanilla protein powder in a fucking pouch in like a baggie. And of course, they stopped me to check what the fuck it is. I'm like, oh, I didn't think this through. This looks like something else that I mentioned in a podcast previously. Idiot. Um, nail clipper, of course, I have that belt, uh, yada, 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 small wet wipes, you gotta have that. Uh, these are just classic things, I guess, SD card reader, in case you need, SIM ejector, I'm not, I'm pretty sure my fucking iPhone at this point doesn't even have a SIM, I think I'm using eSIM, but I'm still carrying a SIM ejector because you never know when you're gonna need that fucking thing. I have it in my backpack at all times. Um, what else do we have? Download show for both of us, download show for me. So when we were traveling on the airplane, I would always download a show that both of us might watch. And then I would download a show in case my wife is not interested in watching a show, just so I can watch it by myself. Are you doing this? Please be in the comments and be like, Kitsa, this is too much. Or be like, yeah, I'm also doing this. It's normal. Two types of shows, just in case. Then I download an audiobook and I download offline music because I might be in all sorts of moods on the airplane, dude. I have this life hack item that I think I posted on Twitter. It's like this. They're called tablet hooks with a Z in the end. So they can be mounted on any airplane and you can mount a tablet or a Nintendo Switch or whatever on them. And basically you get a nice ass screen. Like especially if you have like the bigger iPad, you put it and you know the stewardesses are going to give you, the flight attendants are going to give you a hard time. So I'm sorry, can I have that there during takeoff? And I'm like, why? Is it going to kill someone realistically? So then I put it back as soon as she turns her back. But why did I get the freaking light turning off? What is going on? Shut up. The lights are blinking. I guess it's a signal from aliens. I need to stop with the podcast. Anyway, tablet hooks. Check it out. It's fucking amazing. Uh, so <laughs> Next we have stomach medicine, throat medicine. Do I need to have these things? Now, are there pharmacies anywhere at any corner? Are we going to a stranded island? Or are we going to a place that has Japka? Japka is one of the most popular stores. It's a meme in Poland. Whenever you turn around... In that direction, there must be a Japka. So there's Japka, there's pharmacy, there's everything. But it might be closed and my throat might hurt. So throat medicine. Probably it's expired at this point. And it's going to do more harm if I take it, but whatever. Download talk, talk videos. So I need to download my own videos from a previous talk. And I need to watch it a couple of times just to remember how to give my talk. Because usually, you know, I'm looking at the slides and I'm like, what is the author trying to say here? Like, what, what the fuck was I trying to say? I haven't found the slides either. So I'm going to do that soon. Um, I think that's it. Slipping an air tag into the suitcase. So I used to put like multiple air tags, but I'm like, I need to buy 15,000 air tags. So what I do before a trip, I put it in the suitcase I'm about to take. And then after a trip, I just take it out and put it in the next suitcase instead of having it in billion fucking suitcases. Um, I guess that's it. Now we have a bunch of baby items to take like a white noise machine, a small one, travel one, whatever. Too many things that I need to pack starting right now, which I'm going to pack after I tell you about the content and then I'm going to let you, you know, move on with your day. Uh, even though people said, please make this one hour I need it for my walk. I cannot do it one hour every day. I, that's what I thought today. Literally today, I'm like, what the fuck are you going to talk about? 43 minutes in. God, I love talking. Dude, if I have my grandma ever on a podcast, it's going to be longer than Joe Rogan's podcast. Like that moment, you're like, hey, how are you doing? And that's all you get to say in a conversation. Like she start telling you, all about her childhood. Oh, you've heard it yesterday? Guess what? You're hearing it again today. It's like me with the dentist in the mall. All right, let's go to the content. Book. I listened to another book by the author from Mountain Is You, but if you don't listen or read The Mountain Is You, do that one first. Today, it was a short book, like two and a half hours. I don't know what it was called. It was amazing. I started a third book by her today on Audible. Uh, movies. I haven't watched these recently, but I can recommend them to you. I just remember them. Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. 
They're fucking hilarious comedies. Both of them, I think, similar actor, similar creator. Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, one of the best movies ever. I heard this quote because I wanted to give you a quote, but I don't have that many. So now I remembered one when I was in my Twitter beef with designers. Uh, someone mentioned this quote. A designer knows he has achieved perfection not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. I freaking love this quote. I don't know who was the author. Michael Scott, let's see. TV show, I forgot to mention this. How did I forget to mention one of the best comedies ever? Better than Brooklyn Nine-Nine, better than all this bullshit. It's called What We Do in the Shadows. It's about, it's like it's a sitcom. A, a sitcom? Sitcom? So Russian. Sitcom about um, vampires living in New York amongst normal people. Dude, I've been laughing my ass off. The idea, they also have a movie, but the show is fucking genius. One of my favorite shows. Have binged all the episodes. It's freaking amazing. Game. Uh, because I'm playing Hades and I'm going to probably play it until I'm 95 while I'm doing my wall, my walks in malls, but probably with Steam Deck level 79, where you're just going to AR playing Hades. I was like, I cannot tell them that every day. I got to mention some old games that I've played. So if you're a fan of Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Thieves Legacy or whatever it's called, you got to play Uncharted 1, 2, 3. Even though they're old, they're for PlayStation 2, 3 or whatever. Especially Uncharted 2 is one of the best games ever. So if you are a fan of Uncharted, definitely go back to the old ones. If you haven't played Uncharted, what are you doing with your life? They're on PC now. Go play them. Music, One More Light by Linkin Park. Now, I saw Linkin Park in person before Chester died. Literally, I think 10 or 17 days. I watched them in Amsterdam and they were debuting this new album. And fans were like, oh my God, they're not so hardcore anymore. What is this bullshit? I was also like that. But after his death, I learned to appreciate this album. The album is fucking amazing. I love it that they're changed. The genre a little bit. Now, did I cry my eyes out when Chester died? I feel like a relative died. That that was the first celebrity death that I reacted to. So far, I've had two. The one is Chester and one is uh, Matthew Perry. These people are like so freaking special. Like, if you have listened to Linkin Park, you know what it's like and you know through which portions of your childhood and maybe even teenage years and adult life they've taken you through. So when Chester died, it was like a piece of me. It's so weird, you know, because maybe you haven't, had a relationship like this with an artist to, you know, read that and cry. But for me, it was like a cry fest. And my wife was, you know, when she saw me, she was like, are you joking? What's wrong with you? And I was like, no, it's like as someone I knew died. It's so fucking weird. And I know that the day, like this is so the whitest thing ever to say, but the day when Eminem dies, dude, it's going to be like a family member died. It's going to be like that guy has taken me through so many runs, so many workouts, so many angry periods of my life. It's going to be devastating. Thanks God he looks like he's 30 year old. And I think he's going to rap until he's 120. So yeah, we have two more things on the app. Um, I'm going to go with an obvious one, Telegram for chat. Because people are like, I only have WhatsApp. What are you doing? WhatsApp is like 30 years behind Telegram in features and everything. I hate iMessage, hate WhatsApp, hate Viber. I love using Telegram for everything. I started using iMessage for a couple of things for a couple of reasons. But God damn it, if you don't use Telegram, please, please convert. Three people around you to Telegram, and one day we're going to erase Viber and WhatsApp from existence. And finally, a rap bar from a song. Again, from a Logic song, because I heard it recently. He said, like reading Nostradamus at 90 degrees, you better believe I know how to turn a profit with ease. Again, like reading Nostradamus at 90 degrees, you better believe I know how to turn a profit with ease. A profit? Profit? Like if you take a profit... Pr uh, it's hard to pronounce when you make the, when you say profit. If you turn it, you'll get the pun. You're smart. It's a rap bar. Jesus Christ. So, to do list for the day like, subscribe, leave a review, buy Benji, buy Sizi, buy my course. Like, I, I'm seeing all of these things. I know you're not going to do anything, but go in the description if you want to hang out in the Discord, follow me on Twitter, or I'm not your mom, do whatever the fuck you want. And hopefully, if all is well and the Wi Fi in the hotel is fine, you're going to get podcasts for tomorrow and after tomorrow. If not, I'll record them, but then I'll upload them over the weekend or whatever. Who is the singer of Chandelier? Sia Yadona.